Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, if you've checked out the channel in the past, you probably recognize these bottles in front of me right here. Uh, I've got to my right uh, Glen Alke 10 Cast Strength Batch 5, and on my left, I've got Aaron the Bodega Sherry Cast Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. They're both Cast Strength uh, Sherry finished whiskeys. I guess Glen Alke is a bit more complicated than that with the uh, Virgin Oak and the Rioja thrown in there as well. That said, what we're going to be doing today is a semi-blind comparison of the two to determine which one um, I prefer, which one fits my preferences better, which one I think is uh, is the better whiskey. And subsequent to that, I'm also going to take a guess as to which one I think is which in each of these glasses here. Now, if you watched the beginning of the video, you would have seen that uh, I didn't pour these. I don't know what they are. And it's semi-blind because I know what the bottles are, um, but I don't know which glass they're in. Um, so yeah, uh, again, if you've joined me before, you know these bottles from reviews. I reviewed the Glen Alke 10 Cast Strength Batch 5. Uh, it's coming in at 55.9% alcohol, again, 10 years old, non-chill filtered, natural color. Um, brought to us by the genius that is Billy Walker. Um, if you want to check out the review uh, that I did on this bottle, you can find the link right up here. And over here, the Aaron, uh, the Bodega uh, Sherry Cast Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It's a 55.8% alcohol. It's seven years old. Uh, it's 100% Oloroso Cast. The Glen Alki was, um, again, Pedro Jimenez, Oloroso, uh, Rioja casks and virgin oak. Uh, the Aaron, if you want to check out the review for that, you'll also find the link for that right up here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, one of the reasons why I picked these two whiskeys to go head to head is because they are very close, uh, as close as you can possibly get in EBV in alcohol percentage. Again, they're only 0.1% off. So I shouldn't be able to tell from any alcohol bite or heat which is which. Um, so that, that's a good thing. It's a good comparison. And they also kind of fit the same niche. They kind of fit the same uh, role. If you're looking for uh, a heavily sherried uh, whiskey to tuck into that has a lot of alcohol heft and flavor in it, they both fit that bill. Um, I want to determine which one I like better. So let's get into it. Gonna start with the gold glass here. It's a very fruity, spicy nose. Okay, I shouldn't say very spicy. There's spice on it, there's fruit, some ginger. That fruit. Obviously I'm thinking things like raisins, prunes, plums, because we're dealing with sherry cast whiskeys. To me, I'm picking up what I think is a grape note in this. A grape must. Which I've had before with the Iran, the, uh, the Bodega sherry cask. Um, should probably try not to guess and determine which one it is. I shouldn't play favorites here, I should just figure out which one's better. So pardon me with that slip. Hmm. It's a very sweet, fruity, and um, I'd say it's a well balanced nose. I'm gonna take a sip here. It's lunch. Some chili pepper heat, the the alcohol. There's a little bit of a nip there. But again, raspberry. Uh, some sweets. Some spice. Um, hmm. Take another sip here.
Mm. Again, it's very nicely balanced. Um, again, there's that fruit, uh, fruit uh, from the raspberry, uh, some like uh, raisin notes. There's the spice from what seems like ginger, maybe even some cinnamon. But it's still juicy. And there's some chocolate notes too, uh, to provide some richness. So just really well balanced. A little bit more heat at the end than I was anticipating, but it is it is cast strength. It's still every bit of 55.8% alcohol if it's the Iran. See, I'm guessing again. I do think that's the Iran. I'm gonna jump to the other whiskey here. It's a richer nose. There, there's a, there's a, a really prominent chocolate note on this. And there's some spice, uh, a little bit of prickle from the, the alcohol. And again, some raisins, some prunes. Um, definitely some like desserty tones though, um, which is very rich. I'm gonna say that I'm, I'm picking up some oak, some dark fruits. It smells syrupy to me, which makes me think PX, Pedro Jimenez, which makes me think Glenallic. Taking a sip. Again, rich, round, um, dark chocolate, fig, plum, orange, maltiness. There's some spice to it. Leather, oak in the finish. Yeah, sort of like a Terry's chocolate orange thing going on there. More heat on the back end of the palette than on the front. The front is smooth sailing. It's nice and round at the beginning. Um, you notice the alcohol, but it's not off-putting. A bit more like a, a chili spice um, near the end, the mid to the end palette. Um, really rich, really rich, really decadent. Mm. And really enjoyable for me right now. This is a style I'm really appreciating at the moment. Uh, it's just big, it's bold, uh, it's loaded with flavor. And, um, mm. yeah, I could keep going on drinking that. Just jumping back to the first glass here I have my suspicions about yeah again coming from this back to this this is balance this is elegance if you will um, this is well made and it just it strikes uh, a nice chord um, it hits a little bit of everything it's got a little something for every palate you've got the spice you've got the fruitiness you've got the uh, richness and the decadence from uh, the more confectionery notes really well put together it comes off brighter um, and younger 
to me than this. This profiles is older. This profiles is younger to me. more spice on this finish uh, on this palette not as much oak not as much uh, leather or tobacco notes still really enjoyable I'm really thinking this through it's making me work all right last sip this one uh, I think I'm gonna make my uh, make my call on which one I enjoy better and I'll take my guess at which one I think is which see if I'm right Yeah, just more of the same that I experienced before. Again, the rich palette, leather, tobacco, the chocolate, orange, some spicing, a bit more heat on the back end of the palette than on the front. Um, it's delicious though. Uh, I can add water to them. Uh, I don't wanna make this video again too, too long. Um, I think I'm just gonna make my call and go from there. If you wanna know how these whiskeys uh, drink, with some water added. I briefly cover that in my two review videos, so go check those out. Decision time. All right, here we go. So for me, personally, I think I am getting along better with and enjoying more uh, the palette on the black glass here. Uh, it just, the, the, there's more depth to it and I just find more interest in it. And maybe I'm a little basic and I just want that sherry bomb profile right now instead of something that's just like finely tuned, well balanced. Um, but this is my jam right now. Uh, as to how much of a difference between the two in actual quality, really close. They're both an awesome, awesome glasses of whiskey. If I'm going to take a guess of which one's which, I mean, I kind of let the cat out of the bag earlier. I think this is the Iran, uh, the Bodega Sherry Cask, and I think uh, the black glass here is the Glenalki 10 Cast Strength Batch 5. All right, time for the reveal. So black glass, got an orange sticker on the bottom. If I take a look at the bottle, orange. So my suspicions are correct. I'm actually really happy if you, eventually I'm gonna get one of these wrongs if I keep doing it. I'm just really happy that I got it right. And uh, that makes sense to me. Three more years of age, um, a, a lot of different uh, types of casts in it um, to bring out different flavor profiles. Billy Walker is a master of what he does with uh, blending, uh, his blending work. So I'm not surprised that the Glen Key 10 cast rate won out. Uh, and just to be fulsome with it, green sticker on the bottom of the gold glass, and I'll take a look in a moment, but yes indeed, green sticker on the bottom of the bodega. Take away from this, if you're in a place like Alberta, I think you have a decision to make. Out here in BC, these two bottles cost about the same amount, they're both about $130. Um, which makes it a no-brainer to me. I am going to be buying the Glenalki 10 cast strength. Um, that said, in Alberta, the regular price for the Bodega is about 85, whereas the Glenalki is still 115 to $130 a bottle. Um, that's a huge difference. And if you're getting just as much enjoyment for about $30 less for the Bodega, I'd go with that. So regional market is gonna have a say in this, but where I live right now in British Columbia, Canada, whiskey on the West Coast, we're on the West Coast here, 
I'm going to be reaching for the Glen Alki uh, and pulling that off the shelves. Uh, it's just that much better. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the profile just matches what I'm looking for better. Alberta, tough decision, guys. Tough decision. I, I might be going with the bodega if, uh, if I was in your shoes. All right. Thanks for joining us on uh, Whiskey on the West Coast. Um, if you have had these two bottles, please comment down below uh, which one you prefer. Um, if you have any other uh, thoughts, any requests for future uh, semi-blind comparisons, uh, let me know. Drop it, drop it in the comments. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you can like, share, subscribe, and come back for more in the future, I'd really appreciate it. All right, till next time. Slunch it.